It's really hard to surprise the wrestling audience these days. The biggest reason for this is because nearly every storyline that's planned gets out. All you gotta do is go to one of these many websites and they'll actively tell you what will happen in the future and more often than not, they're spot on. It's a blessing as much as it's a curse. In such trying times, however, WWE has had to get smart, especially as they're the biggest fish in the pond, and when they pull it off, my gosh, are we all stunned. It's in these moments where we realize maybe it's better not to know, and then we just go and repeat the cycle again anyway, because we're all morons. I'm Simon from WhatCulture.com, and this is 10 crazy WWE booking curveballs you never saw coming. Number 10, Brock Lesnar ends the streak. You know how I know no one thought this was going to happen? Just listen to the crowd. They're quieter than that time Judy Bagwell was on a forklift. Everyone in the audience just knew Brock wasn't going to win, so how could they possibly invest? This was done and dusted before the bell even rang. Although, that wasn't the case at all. Instead, the unthinkable happened that night, and it will probably forever stand as one of the most shocking and out-of-left-field booking decisions in WWE history. Brock Lesnar nailed The Undertaker with a third F5, and the referee counted the one, two, and three as almost 70,000 people struggled to make a sound. It was so surprising, many thought there must have been a mistake. But the reality was Vince McMahon had made the call, and Taker, ever being the professional, just went with it. Was it right? Was it wrong? It's a debate that will rage on forever, and now that WrestleMania streak is nothing more than a memory. Like that time you wet yourself in school. Number 9, Heyman, McMahon and Bischoff together. If during the late 90s I would have told you in a few years the head of ECW, WCW and WWE were all going to be standing in the same ring for an angle, well you would have rightfully told me I was an idiot. It was just never going to be possible. And then when we got to May 26, 2005, the unthinkable did take place as three of the most influential men in modern wrestling history stood side by side to reintroduce extreme championship wrestling to the masses. It was a moment that was completely unexpected, especially because WWE failed to advertise this ahead of time. Older fans would have flocked to this, especially as Heyman unleashed on his peers, cutting one of his greatest and most impassioned and scathing promos to date. He shouted, he screamed, he put down, he bantered, and given the context around it, it truly was a moment that was hard to comprehend. As WWE tightens its grasp on the industry, we'll get less and less of such highlights. That's why it's so important to always remember them today. Number 8, Shane McMahon buys WCW. In 2001, when WWE bought WCW, it was almost too much to take in. It would have been like Nintendo buying Sega in the early 90s, Coke snatching Pepsi, or McDonald's eating Burger King. But on March 26th of that year, we had the legendary simulcast where Vince was actually on Nitro, hell froze over, and pigs grew wings and started to fly around. We all know the fallout from this and how disappointing it was, but here on this night it was nothing but excellent. It was like an amazing dream come true. There was a final twist in the tale, however. Because of his ego and storyline, Vince hadn't signed the deal which gave him overship over WCW, allowing his son Shane to swoop in and steal it from under his very nose. Danny McMahon was stunned and so were the fans, to be honest. No one thought this was the direction WWE was going to go in, though it soon became obvious the plan here was yet more McMahon family warfare. Go Team Steph. Number 7, Bret Hart wins the world title behind closed doors. Well, kind of. In late 1992, Bret Hart was the man in WWE. There was no two ways about it. He was having classic after classic and fans were realising they should care about the hitman. That's what they started to do. He was fascinating at the time as well, because it was a real changing of the guard. Bret was not the usual monster human being with a physique made from granite. So would Vince McMahon ever go truly all the way with the Canadian? The answer was, as we know, yes. But it happened in the strangest possible way. On October 12th, Hart arrived in Saskatoon to be told that he was going to win his first world title from the Nature Boy Ric Flair, even though the card that night wasn't on TV. It was unexpected in so many ways, because no one ever thinks that's going to happen when a show is away from the cameras. And also, the likes of the Macho Man and the Ultimate Warrior on hand and they could have been given the opportunity. But they weren't. It was even more bizarre when you tuned into television after this and there was Bret Hart as a champion. It's like you fell asleep and missed everything. Number 6, Hulk Hogan wins the world title at WrestleMania 9. Out of left field booking or genuinely stupid, Hulk Hogan returned from a leave of absence to march back into WrestleMania 9 in a tag team match with Brutus Beefcake against Money Inc. The Hulkster was unsuccessful in that regard so he turned his attentions to a more valuable prize namely the WWE title. Using his political leverage to put himself in the best position possible, moments after Bret Hart lost the WWE Championship to Yokozuna, Hogan rang to ringside to try and argue with the official, telling him that Mr. Fuji had thrown salt in the hitman's eyes. Which, to be fair, was true. For some reason, though, Yoko and Fuji then issued a challenge to Hogan, and from there, madness broke loose. Hulk dropped the leg and became the new champion in seconds, and just to make it worse, all this did was bury Bret Hart too. 
Wonderful. Spiffin' wonderful. Number five, Vince McMahon is the higher power. As dumb as this was, a lot of people were intrigued to learn who the Ministry of Darkness's higher power was going to be in 1999. Who could possibly be the mysterious leader of The Undertaker, leading these minions into some pretty dark places? Well, it was Vince McMahon. Once again, it was completely out of left field, because not only were there loads of better options, but it made no sense with the story being told at the time. The Undertaker had been tormenting Vince for months, and setting weird teddy bears on fire, as well as kidnapping Stephanie, and then we were told that this was just some weird game to try and get under Stone Cold Steve Austin's skin. It was stupid. The biggest failing here was that it was obvious this has only been done for the sake of a shock turn, and that never works when logic goes out the window. It was unexpected, but it was also dumb. Number four, Diesel wins the world title at Madison Square Garden. When Bob Backlund defeated Bret Hart for the WWE Championship at the 1994 Survivor Series, it seemed that once was old, was now new again and that everyone had gone nuts. Despite this, it looked as though he's primed for a decent main event run, but then he ran into Diesel, who beat him in 8 seconds to win the title at MSG. And that was madness as well. For starters, it really was over that fast, and secondly, this was just 3 days after Backlund had grabbed the gold. It was a booking decision that took the wrestling world by surprise, not only because of how much the championship was thrown around, but the fact it was Diesel, who at the time was seen as just another tall dude. His sudden ascension caught the audience completely off guard and did create some interest, Earth was the plan now. Number three, John Cena wins the Rumble. At the 2008 Raw Rumble, no one thought John Cena was going to be there, and that's because he shouldn't have been there. He torn his peck in October 2007 and should have been on the shelf for months. This is John Cena we're talking about. Cena stunned the world by returning to the squared circle well ahead of schedule and entering the 30 man over the top rope match and actually winning. Throwing Triple H to the ground to take the victory, it was out of left field and a swerve because again, this shouldn't have been possible. It was such a surprise the MSG crowd reacted with glee when his music hit, until they remembered who it was and went back to booing the crap out of him. Number two, Shane McMahon returns. Now you won't believe this, but it's true. Two weeks before Shane McMahon made his out of nowhere return on Raw in 2016, one man known as Simon Miller on a podcast predicted this. And yes, that means I have proof. Drop me a line and I can show you when I became a psychic for just one day. That aside, it was absolutely astonishing when Vince McMahon's son returned to the WWE, especially because he'd been away from the company for years. On top of that, there hadn't even been a peep that this was going to happen. It was kept on the down low by everyone involved. This is why when Here Comes the Money did ring out in the arena on the 25th of February, the crowd exploded. It got more nuts as he was put in a Hell in a Cell match against The Undertaker, but the truth of the matter is this drew more interest in WrestleMania 32 while also leaving millions with their jaws slack. The hell had just happened? Number one, Vince McMahon signs Eric Bischoff. If someone had tried to end your business and on occasion seemingly wished death upon you, would you then hire them as and when the opportunity arose? I'm guessing the answer is no, but Vince McMahon is not your normal human being. This is why when McMahon revealed in July 2002 that the new Raw GM was none other than former WCW head honcho Eric Bischoff, it was impossible to believe. It got more crazy too as not only did they shake hands, but they hugged right there at the top of the rampway as if everything was flowers and tea. It was true that at the time ratings were down and interest in pro wrestling had waned a little, but putting personal feelings aside to a former enemy and giving them a starring role on TV? Something else entirely. No one thought this would happen seconds before it did, let alone a few years prior. It was two worlds coming together that should never have been possible. What a time it was to be alive. The killer in you is the power in me Please to me, she's so good to see The killer in you will keep me alive Back to back, self-sacrifice Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below. And if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though. But it might be.